Welcome to our two-part series on how to be successful in a physics interview. This video is going to focus on fellowships and lectureships. And we're going to make this video a little bit different than the others on our channel. Instead of listing tips, we're actually going to go into the intimate details of some of our most memorable interviews within physics and share details that we haven't really shared with other people before. Specifically, we're going to cover what questions we were asked, our biggest mistakes, and our personal secrets to getting ahead in a physics interview. Hi everyone, my name is Jenna Meineke and I'm a junior research fellow at the University of Oxford. Hi everyone, I'm Leia Morabito and I'm a Hintzi fellow here at Oxford. All right, so we're going to start this discussion off by going through my experience applying for the Lawrence Fellowship at the Lawrence Livermore National Lab. Then Leia is going to talk about her experience interviewing for a lectureship. And then finally, we're going to wrap it up by talking about my interview for the Junior Research Fellowship at Oxford. The Lawrence Fellowship at the Lawrence Livermore National Lab is a three-year fellowship that fully funds you to do independent research that's not necessarily programmatic. Um, but the interview itself is a two day long process and they schedule your entire day, both days, from 7.30 a.m. until dinner. And spoiler alert, both lunch and dinner are interviews. Um, so it's a lot of work, it's exhausting. Um, and I made the mistake because I was traveling from abroad of also scheduling a third day of interviews for Stanford um, right after it. So I had three full days of interviews. I was so exhausted that I fell asleep in my hotel room for 48 hours. Now I don't mean I fell asleep and I woke up, I fell asleep and I woke up. No, I fell asleep continuously for 48 hours. And that was legitimately one of the scariest things that has happened in my life. So my main two pieces of advice here are number one, get sleep. <laughs> Get sleep ahead of time. Make sure that you are very, very well rested before you go into your interviews. So take the two or three days prior and make sure that you're sleeping well and you're on a good pattern. The second main advice that I would give here is in between interviews, sleep. <laughs> Do not sit and prepare for the next day of interviews. Don't think about and dwell on the things that you did wrong or the things that you could be doing better because you need to rest. If you're not well rested for an interview, it's not gonna go well. Now onto the preparation. The biggest thing that I had to prepare for was that I had to give a one hour long talk at the beginning of my first day of interviews. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through the exact slides that I used. So I started out by talking about the background, the motivation for this type of research. I then moved on to the bulk of the research I did as a graduate student. For me, this was on turbulent amplification of magnetic fields, both in shock waves and in jets. And I focus a lot of time and energy and explaining my contributions for that. And then I finally wrapped up by doing a section on my leadership in science. It's really important to motivate you as an individual, as a scientist. There are a few other tips that I will give you about putting together slides for your talk. The biggest one you can see here, which is that I focus more on the images and less on the text. When people are looking at your talk, they don't have time to both listen to what you're saying and read the text that's on the board. In fact, if I were to redo some of these slides again, I would probably remove almost all of the text. Now, what happened during the interview? It's important to remember that in national labs, everyone who's interviewing you is already going to be in your niche within physics. So they are gonna focus entirely on very technical questions. They don't care that you have an elevator pitch. They don't care that you can explain science to a person on the street. They want to know the nitty gritty details that you can get down into the details as far as possible. So when I was in my interview, I had one thing that stood out to me in experience that I really want to share. And um, this was a person came into my interview who had not attended my one hour long lecture, didn't know anything about me, but was then going to interview me. And he raced into the room and quite aggressively just said, right, get down to the facts. Tell me this, tell me this, tell me this. And I thought, hold up a minute. Hi, my name's Jenna, nice to meet you. Um, and it took me off guard, honestly. And so I said, well, let's start at the beginning. So I'm doing this research for these reasons. He interjected and said, I don't care why you're doing this research. I just wanna know the details. And this was one of my first experiences dealing with a difficult person in an interview. 
And I think that brings me to one of my biggest tips. During an interview, it is not just an interview of you. It's an interview of the employer themselves. If you do not like the person who is interviewing you, you should genuinely ask yourself, do I wanna work with this person? And do I wanna work at this institution? After I was done with my interviews, I wasn't actually able to see if I had been successful or not because I was given an offer at the University of Oxford. And this brings me to a really important tip. If you were given an offer for a job, take it. You do not know when your next offer is going to come in. And just because you did an interview somewhere does not guarantee that you are going to get that job. Spoiler alert, your offers are not all going to come in at the exact same time. And so if there's an offer on the table that is very good, take it. Do not wait around. So now we're gonna talk about what will hopefully be my last job interview ever. And this is for a lectureship position at Durham University. So the first, first thing is the format. This was spread over two days and all of the candidates were invited for both days. The first day we had to do a teaching demonstration, we had to give a talk, and we also had to sit down and have an informal talk with graduate students about our approach to research and supervision. The second day we had the actual panel interview, which is what a lot of, peop of people get the most nervous about. So this brings me to my very first tip, which is practice, practice, practice. So there were a lot of components to this interview, and I practiced every single one of them. So I have two more pieces of advice for preparation. The first is make a to-do list and a packing list of everything you need to bring with you, so that way you won't get there and realize that you don't have the right adapter to connect your computer to the projector when you give your talk. And you'll, be, you'll feel so much more secure knowing that you have everything on your list. The second thing is do not do any work the day before. Do not do any preparation. You need to finish preparing early so you can have a day of relaxation before you start this really intense process. So the panel interview, this was the most important part of the whole process. And you can help yourself out a little bit by preparing beforehand. It's absolutely fine to take notes with you. So this is my number one tip for the interview is write down notes and bring them with you to the interview. That way, if somebody asks you a question and you're not quite sure, but you know you've looked at it before, you can refer to your notes, that's absolutely fine. My second tip for interviews is take a moment to compose yourself before you answer a question. If you just start answering a question really quickly, the words might tumble out, you might say something you didn't really mean to in the right way, but if you just take a pause, your answer will be so much more composed and it'll actually come across as more thoughtful and better than if you just rush into it. So what did they ask me? Well, surprise, surprise, question number one was, why did I want this job? You will always be asked that in a job interview. Other questions they asked me were about teaching. There was a little bit of questioning on the technical details, but also how would I interact with students? How did I see myself fitting into the university as a whole? and what sort of funding would I apply for to help me build a research group. Before I leave you, here are my two final tips. First, be enthusiastic and engage. It's great, the panel loves to see that you're really invested in the interview and getting the job. And the second tip is also have a question prepared for them. So the interview goes both ways and they will ask you at the end whether you have any questions and it looks really good if you actually do have a question for them. Our last example that we're going to give you is my interview for the Junior Research Fellowship at the University of Oxford. Now, for those who don't know, they're highly competitive. You're not just competing against other physicists. You're competing against people from every single discipline, people from law, people from medicine, people from the humanities. And there are only about 20 positions every single year that they give out. So they don't actually have to hire a physicist. So you really have to sell your physics research even harder. Now for mine, I was only given about a week's notice. Um, they emailed me and said, can you come in next week for the interview? And the interview itself was pretty short. It was maybe 30 or 40 minutes long. There were six people on my panel, five of which were at Christchurch College, one of which was the Dean, and there was a sixth person brought in who was an expert in my field. And this brings me to a really important tip. Know your audience. I knew ahead of time that most of the people on my panel would not be physicists. So you need to be able to communicate the importance of your research to a person who's not a physicist. But in my case, a person who is very well educated. You do not want to dumb it down so much that you insult a person, but you do not want to make it so technical that an average person can't understand the importance of your work. How do you do this? My recommendation is always have an elevator pitch put together. 
An elevator pitch, in case you haven't done one, is within one minute or less, you need to be able to sell your research to a person who you would see on the street. So let me give you an example of what mine would be like. I'm using the largest lasers on Earth to recreate supernovas in the laboratory that could fit in the palm of your hand. By doing this, I can take events that take hundreds of thousands of years to develop and recreate them in the laboratory within a fraction of a second. And by doing this, I can answer fundamental questions. In particular, what is the origin of magnetic fields in our universe? Now, what was I asked in my interview? I was asked a lot of different questions, but the three biggest ones that I remember are one, what was my contribution to the research? They specifically wanted to know what I was bringing to the table. When you do science research, you often have a lot of co-authors and you need to be able to identify your specific contributions. The second thing that came up was, is this research that you're proposing for this fellowship novel? Keyword here is novel. They want to know that you're not just adding to research that has been done, you are doing something that is very distinct and special in its own way. And the third thing that I was asked, which I thought was a really fun and interesting question, was one of the, pre the people on my panel asked me, well, I have a daughter who's nine years old and she's really interested in science. How would you communicate to her the importance of your research? So here's how I roughly answered that question. Supernovas are one of the most powerful events in our known universe. It's the violent death of a star. When a star dies, it disperses into the universe all of the elements that make up our physical bodies, from the iron in our blood to the calcium in our bones. Our physical bodies are made up of stardust. And I think as humans, we are genuinely curious about who we are, where we're from, and also why we're here. And so by using the largest lasers in the Earth, I can then recreate astrophysical objects in the laboratory to better understand fundamental questions about our universe. In particular, I want to know what is the origin of magnetic fields in our universe? So after the interview was done, I was completely exhausted. I had actually just flown in from the United States. I was completely jet lagged and exhausted from a bunch of experiments. And I honestly thought the interviews went really poorly because I was so tired. I couldn't remember everything. And I got an email that evening saying that they were offering me the job officially. Um, and I had basically one week to respond. And that is one of the scary realities of interviewing for physics jobs. Sometimes you have short periods of time in which you have to say yay or nay to an offer. And I think the key here is if it's something that you do want, take it. Don't wait around for a better offer. Don't wait around for more options. When you have an option on the table, take it. So we hope you found this video useful. If you have any more questions before your interview, please leave them in the comments below and we'll help answer them. So until next time, see you later.